In this video, we're gonna talk about how to flatten your belly in the fastest time possible. And you do see these videos out there that, hey, you just need to drink this one thing or take this one pill before bed, and you'll wake up with a flat stomach. Well, that may only be true if that uh, belly is really just coming from bloating. And the other very common question is, how many sit-ups do I have to do? How many crunches do I have to do to achieve a six-pack ab? First of all, what is your abs? Well, we're talking about mainly a muscle called the rectus abdominis. And it's not just one muscle. It's a series of little packets of muscle, aka six-pack abs. Crunches might make them stronger and slightly bigger, but that's not the answer for a six-pack ab. And when we deal with this um, rectus abdominis muscle, uh, that muscle is mainly uh, there to keep the insides, your guts, from coming out. It's there to stabilize your torso or your what they call the core, which is your, your entire midsection, not just your front part, but your back as well. And so if you're going to do crunches and you just really focus on that all the time and you don't at the same time balance it by working out your back muscles, you are going to develop either poor posture or back pain. So crunches are good as long as you balance them out with other types of things. But don't expect to uh, flatten your stomach by doing crunches. That's not the right thing to do. I mean, you want to do some, but it's not the thing that's going to make the big difference. And there's two uh, different types of fat uh, related to your midsection. You have the superficial fat, which is called the subcutaneous. It's right below the skin. And then you have the deeper uh, visceral fat. That's the fat around the organs underneath it that presses it out. So right now, if you were just to relax your stomach, and if it extended outward, that would be more visceral fat, which is the fat that's spilling over from the liver. Now, the superficial fat can be best addressed with diet and a certain type of exercise, which basically is aerobic or long walks or hikes. On the same time, I also recommend you do high-intensity interval training because that's going to stimulate um, certain hormones like growth hormone and another fat-burning hormone called uh, glucagon, and also another fat-burning hormone called testosterone. These are fat-burning hormones. Those are triggered by intensity of exercise. But now the visceral fat is mainly dealt with through your diet. Exercise is important, but diet is way, way more important to get rid of the visceral fat because that visceral fat is mainly coming from too much insulin because you're eating too many carbs. You're eating an excess that's just ending up with extra fat around the liver, and then it spills off around the abdominal area. So just by going on a low-carb diet within two weeks, you literally have the ability to remove up to 50% of the fat off the liver, okay? And then you give it more time, and then you're going to see your stomach start shrinking more and more and more. All right, let's shift gears to uh, fat-burning foods, okay? Now, these are foods that stimulate the fat-burning hormones. So exercise is one way to stimulate fat-burning hormones, but certain foods can also do it, like protein, for example. Protein can stimulate not just growth hormone and testosterone, but that other hormone called glucagon as well. And so people have these protein shakes, Sometimes they do the green shakes or protein powders combined with low starch vegetables. So really the meat and vegetables put you in a state of what's called ketosis where your body is starting to burn fat. So you notice I didn't say a high fat diet because that's not necessarily what keto is. It's low carb. One big reason I do recommend adding more fat initially to that diet is because it makes it easier to fast for longer periods of time because you're more satisfied. And then when you start to lose more fat, you might want to cut that back if you're really targeting the midsection, because what we want to have happen is we want you in a state of fat burning. But if at the same time you are eating things that are causing a fat storage situation or stimulating the fat making hormone that's called insulin, it's the thing that nullifies all the good work when you eat carbs. I'm talking about Refined carbs like the bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, fruit, sodas, all of those. And by the way, those things actually make you hungry, which uh, is not going to help this plan because you're going to be starving all the time. When we lower insulin by not eating carbohydrates, we actually live off our own fat and our hunger goes away. Now, you also have probably heard of all the fat-burning supplements out there. 
like Garcinia cambogia, or raspberry ketones, or green tea extract, or caffeine, or certain extracts of chili peppers, all of these things tend to stimulate your metabolism. But again, if you're consuming things that are increasing your insulin, those are going to be very expensive urine because they're going to go right through you. They're not going to work. So I wanted to make a big point about that because you have to understand um, levels of importance, things that are really, really important and things that are trivial and things that are dependent on other things. Because the last thing I want you to do is uh, you know, have this great diet, but you're, you're eating these little carbs on the side and you kind of nullify all this good results. Another factor that's very important is the frequency of eating. Okay, If you're snacking, if you're eating between meals, that can slow things down. Why? Because one of the triggers for insulin, the fat storing hormone, is eating in general. So the less you eat, the better, like two meals a day or even one meal a day. And one really important point about that, which relates to the next topic, which is bloating, is how snacking keeps you bloated. Think about what bloating is. Bloating involves your digestive system, okay? So many people. Uh, have a big belly because of bloating. They're bloated 24-7, and they think that's fat, when in fact, it's sometimes it's not. It's just their digestive system is in a constant state of working really hard and not digesting. And so, so this intermittent fasting is so important to give your digestive system a chance to take a break. So the combination of eating too frequent and overeating will create bloating. And um, I see it all the time, especially when people, after they eat, they just like their stomach is just completely, you know, distended. If you do infrequent eating, I, I promise you, you'll do much, much better. This happens if you eat and you get bloated right away. It could mean that you need more um, acid in your stomach. And I recommend betaine hydrochloride. That's a natural remedy for bloating and gas, and things like that. And you would probably want to take quite a few in the beginning, maybe five, six, or seven small little tablets right before you eat. Okay? And you take that, and then you eat, and then you'll find that an extra acid will help break things down much, much better. And in some people, they need more bile salts from their gallbladder. So you would take like a gallbladder formula right after the meal, maybe one or two, to help uh, more of that. And so the lack of acid and the lack of bile can create uh, a lot of digestive bloating, things like that. And of course, certain things like fruit will bloat people all day long. Uh, the sugar in yogurt uh, can bloat you. And of course, the obvious stuff like the beans and the grains and all that will totally keep you bloated. And even when someone gets on a ketogenic diet and they have these little snacks with almond flour and sugar alcohols like xylitol, erythritol, oh, it's low sugar, but it, they put all these uh, sugar alcohols that will just bloat the heck out of you. And then also these new functional fibers like tapioca fiber or soluble corn fiber. Boy, that will just bloat you. And these so-called clean, healthy, plant-based green shakes or protein shakes. You look at the ingredients, there's like millions of things in there, all these fruits, all these different fibers. Boy, you drink that, you're just going to be bloated, walk around, just feel distended. Not good if you're trying to have a flat stomach. And that relates to if you have IBS or some type of inflammatory condition in your gut and you're doing salads and you're doing nuts and things like that, you probably want to go on the carnivore for a while because if you have bloating, you're not going to be able to digest these things. And all it's going to do, it's going to ferment in the wrong place. It's going to ferment in your small intestine when it should ferment in the large intestine. And fermentation is basically where the microbes are eating up the sugars in it. The last thing I'm going to mention, and that is stress. Cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that will literally not only cause bloating, but also the stress basically turns things into more sugar and then that causes more fat. So, when I mentioned the insulin being a really key factor in whether you're going to lose weight or not, um, cortisol is almost at the same level. If you're going through high stress, it's going to nullify some of the other results. So, this is why the best thing for stress is the walking other types of exercise, physical work, and sleeping. Okay, Very important to fix the sleep as well. The other challenge that happens with women that are postmenopausal is that their adrenal glands are now having to back up the ovaries. And so we have the situation where now they get more belly fat. So make note of that and do what you can if you're 
going into menopause, but I can't overemphasize the very important diet that you need to be on. And for that, you should watch this video right here.